Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new series of Crusader Kings 2 here on the Lord Master channel. My name is Lord Master and I know what you people are thinking. Lord Master, what are you doing back on Crusader Kings 2 again? Even though you are currently committed to do a an ongoing Crusader Kings 3 series with the Avars. Well, let me tell you. Well, there's words for it, but let me tell you. I just, uh, it's not due to boredom, it's just more of, um, I was reading some things and I was, uh, as with most cultures or certain faiths, I was very, very fascinated by it. So, I did some looking around on YouTube and I was kind of shocked that nobody has ever done this before. Um, in the sense of, uh, government form. It's like, sure, there's nomadic playthroughs before, but... Nobody has ever made a video featuring a nomadic government in the historical immersion project. And so that's why I decided to do that. And yes, we're doing it with the somewhat more historical map. Even though the uh, vanilla map version, they do much better in in uh, lowering the, uh, the size, making it smaller for the size of each and every single province. Where it's much easier to traverse and takes less time to get from one place to another but I decided to do a uh, somewhat more historical map because it's just some would think it would feel right at home and others would say well it's because certain parts of the setting can be a bit challenging especially that it changes certain locations of uh, holy sites or certain objectives and all that and so let's go to the home province of where this series is going to be set on. Alright. We are here and obviously it's January 1st, 867, the earliest start date. Which seems obvious. Um, but as you can see, despite the snow, the terrain here is marsh. This is our only province for our nomadic clan of us. It's marshland, which which has its both positives and negatives living here. But this is the character that I am currently playing as. This is Etiba Sage of Boru Tomak. Boru Tomak is the name of this nomadic clan, which is of a Pechenegg origin, which is the culture we belong to. And I was trying to decide, okay, which nomadic clan should I start as? And I thought, okay, let's do it with this one. And of a Pechenag culture, which as I use the uh, HIP, um, somewhat more historical map bone, cultural bonuses, this is a bonus that gives plus 10 levy size, if there are any levies, local revolt risks likely really reduced, Culture technology spread rate plus 10. Light cavalry and attack and defense are up as well at 7.5. Same for the horse arches. Population growth is uh, is, is, is plus 5. And uh, plus 4 for clan sentiment for your fellow uh, Pechenegg clans that are out there. Including the Kagan, which I'll show you who that is in just a moment. Eteba is the name of the rank that's used by Pechenegs and um, Khazars. So what do we know about this man here? He is a skilled tactician. He is a trained fighter. He is gregarious. He is patient, proud, and deceitful. So he's kind of half and half on morality in terms of you know that faith he belongs to and this is the number one reason why I decided to do a nomadic playthrough uh, which is not only the nomadic government which I'll show you the religion in a moment so here nomadic you will have a lower um, opinion from vassals while increasing the max population Nomads are not very interested in owning holdings, only in more grazing land for their sheep and horses. Gameplay centers around the population of the tribe and the manpower it provides. Empty holding slots uh, on in open terrain increases the maximum population. While nomads can have normal vassals, 
but they're mostly concerned with managing the other a few but powerful major clans of the tribe. You can hold nomad holdings of Hunties. You can build temple holdings if you can pay for it, if you've got the money for it. You can call nomadic government vassals to arms instead of using liege levies. You don't get any vassal tax from, from nomad government vassals as well. Laws are changed by expanded, expending prestige, not by votes. Vassal titles can be revoked without needing special laws. Raiders can raid infidel neighbors for loot. You cannot demand religious conversion. And your law effects are ignored. Male rulers can take up to three concubines. And also you have uh, minus four viewer commanders. So we only get two other commanders other than myself. You can move the capital within the same lifetime every 120 months. So every five years. N nomadic vassals are not included in the vassal limit calculation. You cannot grant kingdoms and empires to characters of a governance from a different group. Ignores religious differences when attempting to arrange a marriage or take a consort. You can reform the feudal, ICTA, and merchant republic governments. You can pillage settlements to gain wealth and technology. And you can abandon provinces to gain increased population and manpower growth. So. This is obviously way different than you see my typical playthroughs with Feudal and sometimes Merchant Republic. Merchant Republic. But now the real reason why we're all here is this religion, Manichaeanism. Manichaeanism is a Gnostic religion founded by the prophet Mani, who was put to death by the assassinated Shan Shah Baram I in 277. His religion of light incorporated elements of Christianity, Zoroastrianism, Buddhism, and Gnosticism. At one point, Manichaeism spread far and wide, and was the biggest competitor with Christianity for replacing classical paganism until it began to fade in the 6th century. And uh, it was said that Manichaeism was the first universal religion. I mean... It it all started um, here down in Persia. I mean, I mean, Prophet Mani was born in uh, Babylonia, um, around the Baghdad region where Sestaphon used to exist. So that's where he came from. He was born during the time of the Parthian Empire, during its uh, late years. And uh, Mani had his revelation, and then he decided to, to preach to this new religion to not only in the Sassanid Empire, the new Persian Empire, in which uh, in which the Persian Emperor decided to grant him and says, okay, we'll let you practice your uh, new religion and you can spread as much as you like. We won't oppose you. And Mani traveled from one place to the other, such as um, parts of India, be it in either in the Punjab or in Sindh, uh, which is where he got his influences from Buddhism from. And then had obviously living in this area which was a mixture of Zoroastrians and and uh, Christians living there. Including Judeo-Christians. So when he came from that family. So, so he incorporated elements of, uh, as it was said in the description, of Christianity, Zoroastrianism, and Buddhism. Uh, to... Basically, you know, create a, a new religion, but also heavily influenced by local Gnostics there. You know, those with dualist doctrine, same as them. And uh, religions, again, it started in Persia and only spread into India for a lesser degree. It spread as far west as Spain and it was even in, found in Rome. It was found in Egypt, the Balkans even Sogdiana and even all the way to China and during its decline of the 6th century as it said there was only one country in the world that actually accepted Manichaeanism as a state religion and that is the Khanate of the Uyghurs or the Uyghurs in which uh, let me see I mean, yes, they were Manichaeans back then, but there was a much older ruler, but came from a different uh, 
different clan, different house, which there was a Uyghur ruler by the name of uh, Tengri Bogu, that he was converted to Manichaeism, and the Uyghur Khanate became the only nation, at least as far as to my knowledge is concerned, the first nation, the first independent nation or Khanate to accept Manichaeism as the state religion, thanks to uh, Sogdian Manichaean monks that traveled up there along the Silk Road all the way up to their area in modern-day Mongolia. As I said, it was a widely practiced religion, but not as widely in terms of population numbers as some people would suggest. But, but as with all things, uh, as with most, you know, ancient religions, they, you know, fade away. And a large part of that was due to severe persecution by whomever they ran across. Some be it Christians, Zoroastrians, Muslims that it came later on. And even from the Chinese as well. Um, even though Manichaeanism persisted all the way until at least the 17th century. As far as recollection is concerned based on what I've read. But there is one single uh, Manichaean temple today that is well intact and possibly still in use to this day. Well, even though on the outside it looks like a Buddhist temple, but on the inside it doesn't look Buddhist. <laughs> it's Manichaean. Even though we considered Manichaeism today to be a dead religion, but there are people today who claim to still uh, practice it, whether if it's found on the internet or or even people who ran that temple there in Sao An, in southern China. That, that temple there in Sao An, uh, where, where I saw a picture uh, the other day where there were about a good number of uh, Chinese Manichaean priests who were still uh, maintaining and practicing it, actually. And I also read that there is one Mongolian family who are Manichaeans. And I'm sure there are much even smaller number of them in Europe and in the United States of America as well, uh, where I come from. Doubt I would find them in Texas, but that's all. You have to find them on the internet. <laughs> and for those of you who are watching YouTube, if you are a practicing or had any interest or into certain aspects of Manichaeism, be, don't be afraid to acknowledge. Um, Nobody's going to persecute you here in this channel because this is why I decided to do this series. It's to give a spotlight on this faith that does not get a lot of love in this game. Especially here in the Historical Merchant Project where it has its own little flavors, which I'll show you that before we will finally get on with the series as a whole. Now, let's get back down here to where we were inside of this uh, swamp of uh, the province of Sarajuk. Now, again, Manichaeanism. The high god name is Zervan, and it's got a lot of god names. I think it's the most I've ever seen. Zervan or Mazd, which is the Middle Persian language for Ahura Mazda, the Lord of Wisdom, which is also the Zoroastrian god. Mani, the prophet and founder of Zoroastrianism. The Radiant of Jesus, the prophet Enoch, the prophet Shem, the prophet Abraham, the prophet Zoroaster. The Prophet Buddha, the Great Ban, Mitras, Maitreya, the Prophet Seth, and the Prophet Noah. Which just pretty much tells you how they really liked those prophets or what meant so much to Manichaeans. And the evil god names include Jehovah, which is rather strange to me. I wonder what came to being. I may have to do a little more research on him. Ariman, which is a Middle Persian name for Angramainu, which means angry spirit, which is basically, you know, Satan and Lucifer there. That's basically who they are in a way. And so again, it's a dualist religion where one side is purely good, light, and the other purely evil, darkness. The scripture is the, the Evangelion, which is Greek for... Um, the uh, living gospel that's what it means that's what that scripture is and obviously we have its own religion head which is the Archegos Hamza as you can see it up there I'll show you that guy in a moment 
Um, Manichaean bishops must pay tax to the Pope rather than the secular liege. Uh, it should have said uh, the Argegos, but it's left there because of habit, because it w has a little feature that works similar to Catholicism. The Argegos can grant divorces, the invasion casus belli, can call for a great purification, which is basically crusades, but there's not enough Manichaeans in the world to even matter. Matrilineal marriages are not allowed, which is similar to what they have in Islam down there. As we are nomads, that matters little to us, of not having matrilineal marriages. There's always an Archegos, landed or not. The Manichaean Archegos exists in the old gods and Charlemagne bookmarks, and may be restored later. In other words, this is the old gods bookmark in 867 AD, so the Archegos exists. Charlemagne bookmark refers to 769, which HIP doesn't, uh, the somewhat more historical map setting does not have that. But if you choose to play HIP without some other more historical map, um, you can start at 769. Manichaeans have their own holy festival, the Bema Feast. And finally, Manichaeans may elect to dedicate themselves to the uh, Shekinah upon adulthood. Now, this is the religion head by the name of Hamza. But, fascinatingly enough, it does have religious electors. The Council of Apostles. For those of you that saw my Republic of Amalfi playthrough with playing as a Catholic, this works very similar. It's just, you have five of them. There are none right now because, you know, there's not enough mannequins in the world and there are no temple holdings that belongs to them. Except for him who has the titular title of the Manichaean Church as he is of a Levantine culture because he currently resides in Baghdad where that culture persists there. Even though in actuality their residence should have been at least back in 769 would have been in Samarkand because that was their they moved their residence from Baghdad to um, Samarkand due to persecution over there. Although some Manichaeans under the Abbasid uh, caliphate were tolerated to some degree until they had their fill with them as did with most things throughout history. So Hamza here, our religious head, he's a dutiful cleric, he's arbitrary, chaste, stubborn, and diligent. So not quite a perfect uh, religious man but he is what he is. Traits are randomized at the start of the game. So now, let's get down to some business, finally. We already have our um, council. The Astabad, the Aran Spabed, the Chamberlain, the Spymaster. Well, we have no Didascalos because we do not have one qualified to be appointed. Because after all, we are a small court. There's only six people. There's me. This courtier, this woman, my advisor, this other woman, the Astaban, the spy master, Ernst Babad, and Chamberlain. So, that's pretty much all of us. And this is the Khan that I serve. He leads the Pechenegg tribe. It may look a bit sizable, but consider this. He's got a sizable number of levies, including event spawn troops, so he'll be capable of defending himself as well as we would have to fight his battles but now let me tell you he's not a nice man because he calls me infidel because obviously all the other clans are Tengrists which is the religion of the steppe peoples of Eurasia especially Turkish and Noma Mongol nomads their chief god is Tengri the creator god who rules the skies shamanism animism also feature prominently in the religion which, of course, you've seen that religion before in a couple of different series, including the uh, Pannonian Avars, that other ongoing series early on. As stated before, not a nice man, not to mention lustful and ambitious. But he is old, so I doubt he'll be around for long, which he will be succeeded by him, who at least will be a little more kinder, as he is a man of diplomacy, but a bit shy. And, and we're the only Manichaeans here. 
I mean, there are others. Um, there are other Manichaean clans out there, such as the Chigo clan, which they are Karlux, and the aforementioned Uyghurs. Although there are Manichaeans down in uh, Otra and Tashkent, but it's ruled by Muslims. But there are Manichaean holy sites, uh, such as Samarkand we mentioned. There's another one in uh, Rivand, in Nishapur, another in Estef, um, Esfahan, and another in Irahistan, and the last one, Baghdad, where Prophet Mani was born. In, the, in that area, anyways, not the city of Baghdad itself, because Mani's existence predates Baghdad. So. It's been 20 minutes, 21 minutes. First thing I should do is get married. As I do not have a family. I do not have any known parents because I am probably the founder of this house, this clan. And uh, I will choose a lifestyle focus. But since I have a military education, it should be obvious to go for war. You know, increase my combat skills, although it would lower my diplomacy a bit. Oh, I should appoint our cartographer as well. Which I'll go for her since there ain't no one else around to be qualified for it. Fortunately, we are sitting on a silver mine resource. I forgot to tell you the mods, but I'll tell you in just a few minutes. Um, and including, you can look it up on the description on my video uh, of the mods I'm currently using. Also, I will choose a Shekina, as I mentioned before. It is a settling of the Divine Presence of God, representing a facet of Manichaean worship which a member of a faith chooses to focus upon. Let's do that. The Manichaeans believe there were five Shekina, which are elements where the Divine dwells. Each Manichaean can choose the element upon which to focus. Once chosen, that focus cannot be changed. Well, I need diplomacy. It's rather important. Despite the fact that I'm a rather deceitful man who's got pretty good at intrigue. There are others you cannot to consider. Since I picked the war focus, which put a drop on diplomacy, I'll go for this. I will focus on tar -ita, or understanding. And since Manichaeanism is part of the Ahura Mazda religious group, or the Mazdan group, uh, even though it's entirely separate faith in itself, I could choose among the personal patron, among the Amesha Spentas of Zoroastrian faith. I should dedicate to myself, I should dedicate myself to a particular angel and let their power inform my rule. I could go for this, but I'd rather keep the intrigue, because it might have some use of it. Choosing any of these as a personal patron saint or a Mesha Spenta would be a testament of my piety. Aha. I will go for a Meritat. Immortality. Sure, it lowers my fertility a bit, but increases health so I can live long in life. Also, we can have a court physician, which um, there isn't much to choose from anyhow. And I think that pretty much um, settles it here. So let's get the time moving a bit, as I will be showing you a couple more features. We can observe a beam of feast, but you can only do that if you have at least three Manichaean vessels available, vassals available, which there are none right now. But imagine if I was the Khan of the Pension Egg and be it a Manichaean and one day got to get rid of the Tengri clans and replace them with Manichaean clans, then we can observe a Bima Feast altogether. From the Karabay clan. Please support me by voting with me in the council. If you agree to do this for me, I will henceforth owe you a favor. You are an advisor. I accept. I am the Marshal of the Pension Eggs. 
will use that favor at any given time. There's one thing I forgot. Gotta join this uh, warrior lodge, the Eagle Warriors. Gotta use my martial skill put to use. The Eagle Warriors of the Steppe carry on the ancient tradition of training and hunting with birds. The most prestigious type being the Golden Eagle. The Hunters, also known as the Brakuchi, are said to only need three things in life. A fast horse, a faithful dog, and an eagle. I could join it because I am nomadic. Eltebe Otemish of Baranja of the Eagle Warriors greets me with a brief nod. Another recruit, huh? To join our ranks, you need to prove yourself, boy. The man says gruffly, holding his arms crossed us. You'll be finding one of our own. Still interested, my lord? Well, I am 18 years old and I'm in the prime of my life here, so I'll gladly fight to prove myself. I agree to do whoever it is that the Eagle Warriors has chosen for, chosen for me. I could choose a war horse, but that's going to cost me money. Etaba Otemesh of Varanja and uh, the Eagle Warriors has chosen Sartach Suva as my opponent. The staunch man eyes me up and down when we are introduced. Fresh meat, huh? He offers mocking April before shoving it up to my side, making everyone laugh. So this man is a Bulgar. I have 46 personal combat skill. He's got 45, so it seems to be an even match. I'm a trained fighter, so is he. And he's a commander to boot. A duel for honor, huh? Just as I swing my dull spear in a perfect half circle, causing him to fall backwards to surprise Huff, Sartach managed to break several of the bones in my chest. Dizzy, I could just make out the sounds of the crowd. It is not my name they are chanting. Where did I go wrong? I just suffered some cracked ribs. But he got wounded too. Because he fell backwards. And uh, he cracked my ribs. Well, I got wounded, so I lost the initiation duel, but I wounded him. Where did I go wrong? Well, I was spinning a perfect half circle. Perhaps I was just showing off with that wooden spear. I may be a mannequin, but I'm not a perfect, you know, kind of a a person that would be considered as a lay member, even though there's no monastic, monastic society for mannequins, even though there should have been one, based on its practices. The Khan has declared a conquest of Pronsk against uh, Meshchev. To the Honorable Entebbe Sage of uh, Borutomak, during your initiation, your display of bravery and good attitude has impressed us all. We gladly invite you into our ranks. Finally, I will gain the sympathy for pagan religions, which means that Khan would respect me a little more. But we need to get to know each other a little better. And don't forget, you need to get married. I recall there's this woman here who is Manichaean, locally. Gundutz. Even though she is a lowborn, but I don't care. I mean, I'll take the prestige hit and I'll get him back by any means. I mean, she's 14 years old, which in HIP setting, 14 years old is a eligible to be married age at Miminal. Gondots and Altavatsage are getting married. We could collect a role aid duty to pay for the ceremonies. Well, I'm going to need some of that prestige back, so I'll say no. People respect wealth. What little difference does it make? And I'm going to give her the stewardship education. But I'm not going to be the one to educate her. That's going to go to my Chamberlain to educate her the rest of the way. Take a drink. So I completed my ambition to get married.
Yeah, I'd like to be a skilled fighter one day. And since I'd just been wounded recently, I got to get myself a uh, weapon training. I could develop my combat rating by training personal combat skill. While I don't know my true potential, at the very least I'll manage to understand the rudiments of combat, giving me a fighting chance on those moments where the blade of my trusty sword's all that separates me between life and death. Because you lost that duel and you have a combat rating less than 30, you could spend your gold to get all that. I have decided to invest a significant portion of my time to hone my combat skills. My training can be approached from two different angles though. Karatsa is his name. He is a duelist. He has situational awareness, which is his character has the capability to be aware of the tactical challenges around him, prioritized correctly to the most threatening ones. He also has poisoned weapons. This character has decided to coat his weapons in poison. Well, since we live in the marsh, I'm sure you got something nasty here locally. And knowing that I am injured, I will take my time and measure my effort. I will train with caution and avoid placing my body under severe strain. Results of the training will take longer on average, and I'll be less prone to injury. The older I am, the higher the chances for injury. I'm a young man in the prime of my life, so I ain't afraid. It's mild winter here, so we have not really taken a look at this area. Despite the living in a marsh, it is good grazing land here, which gives you that maximum population of plus 50%. It is peaceful here as well, and it is part of the Silk Road, but there is no Silk Road trade post here. It's not anywhere nearby. And just now, coastal flooding. Wind and rain along coastlines lead to higher than normal swells which inundate the low-lying areas and wreak havoc on shipping. So yes, this would affect um, none except the local movement speed. Wait a minute, what's going on? Get out of here. I just noticed that. The Khazar has declared war against the Pechenag to make it a tributary state. Sorry, we're getting my ord out of there. Go far. Away from them. Don't want to get destroyed by them. I would hate to fight against them since I'm a wounded man with cracked ribs. Yeah, this is our powerful neighbor. The Khazars of Khazaria. They are a Jewish cognate. But they are much stronger than the Pechenegs in terms of military size as well as potential vassal allied troops. But it has its benefits. I mean, he's already made three of them tributary states. So that means, uh, again, let me hover that as a, since he's the suzerain of those three. This is an example. It'll provide 50% of their income to their suzerain. The prestige goes up while the tributary goes down a bit. Slightly. The tributary relationship might break when either party becomes part of a different realm. The tributary can call their suzerain into wars. The suzerain can call the tributary into wars. The tributary could fight other tributaries. The suzerain could intervene in tributary infighting. And the tributary could call other tributaries into a war against their suzerain. I'll tell you what, I'll accept, but I will only accept by taking part in your war over there, since you want this piece of land for yourself. So we'll take the long way round. Gotta take the safe route, away from that Khazar Horde. So, I think it would be beneficial if the Pechenegs were to work with the Khazars. I urge you, Khan. Surrender to them and cooperate with them. It'll work for you and it'll work for me. Not to mention that, yeah, we're not only sat between the Khazars down there, but also the Ugo's Turks over there. Which one is attacking and the other is defending. And they are also a bit powerful in their own way.
They're taking their sweet time to come to the uh, swamps here. But to be fair, they are suffering coastal flooding and river flooding. That's why they're taking so long. That's why we were able to escape from them. Yeah, river flooding from the Volga and the coastal flooding from the from the Caspian. We got away from them. Come with me. We'll see too if we can take care of those guys. As we're taking a long way round while we escape from the clutches. <laughs> what fortune. A butterfly landed on my arm. It looks so harmless, just fluttering its wings, unaware of my existence. Well, I am a patient man, so I'll just say, I'll wait until it flies away. Okay, now let's take this time to remind you people the mods that I am using this series, which is what I should have said from the beginning of this episode. And you can also look up the list of mods that I have on the, uh, on the description of this video. The mods that I'm using are a more navigatable rivers, HIP, somewhat more historical map. Artifact Acquisition and Overhaul, Cultural Cities Remix, Dark Ages version 1.2.51, HIP Summon More Stoker Map, the HIP Summon More Stoker Culture Bonus, Medieval Trade Routes, HIP Map, Patron Deities, Soulmates, The Great Trade League, The Orders of Chivalry, University, Viet Advents Reborn, and uh, Spouse Empowerment. Where are they going? Ozens, they're heading down there. Likely gonna go for Ural. I think it would be wise to catch these guys. They are a smaller force and we are a cavalry intensive force. We can definitely devastate them. Plus I want to train in personal combat. And by the way, I'm not using the Christian Immersion mod anymore for this series because we're obviously not Christians. It's Manichaeanism. That's why things are slightly different around here. And also, I remember I left two mods on because I was trying something else for a for another uh, alternate series that I originally have a side project for planned, but didn't come to fruition. Um, which one is the Dan Huang Immersion Pact, Gateway of China. But obviously in this map setting, there is no Dan Huang. It's further east outside of the edge of the map and uh, also the Pamir immersion pack the roof of the world and that and those two is the reason why we have this decision as well just to add a little bit more Manichaean flavor to it even though it's not necessarily Manichaean and that is to celebrate Noroz what you have to do when you're not a commander have to be at peace and as long as you have the money to afford and it has to be Greater or equal to April and less than July. And it's July now, so we cannot celebrate it. Now they're besieging my home. And there's nothing I can do about it, because if we try to do that, we'll get destroyed. But we'll be able to catch these guys. So they're going to take the objective soon. They're going to take the... Uh, capital in a couple of days we'll begin our battle with them in a couple of days some of the buildings that's been damaged I'm trying to remember what did we lose I think it was the craftsman quarters that got destroyed no? Horse breeder, riding contest, training grounds. We don't have ideas. They destroyed them both. Those madmen. Those evil forces of darkness. Trying to make our life harder. Unfortunately, they do not cost much prestige. Anyways, the battle has just started, so let's get down to here. Alright, here we are.
on our way to the steppe of the Barish tribe, a huge boulder blocks our path. Haven't been marching for days. My muscles are aching for a real challenge. Recruit! I bark at a young boy carrying a weapon far too big for his hands. Hand me that hammer. Give him brawny or I become brawny. Well, actually, this is a good start. Because you should become brawny. It's healthier. You get more martial and a little more diplomacy and combat skill. But bearing in mind, you're still a wounded man. And they have my wife. Oh, we were just married. She's just a young teenage girl. What's the matter with you? Let's do something about this rock. I'll get to work and I'll become brawny. Increasing my combat skills by a bit. But it's kind of dangerous to be leading troops out here, but they got no commanders. You know, we took a river crossing, but that's alright. The war is won here, but I'll win my first battle event. We got them all. And we only took seven casualties. Excellent. But hey, at least I became brawny. Got something out of it, so this is a good start. They're already at the capital of the Kaganate. Well, it's not a Kaganate. It's a, uh, it's just a nation called Pechenegs. See if we can kill a few. And maybe I'll get some more, uh, beneficial. I'll speed up the game speed a little more, a bit. It's just one more thing I've not shown. A clan screen that's related to nomads. But first, a special acquaintance. Recently, I asked about approaching with an idea of his own. As matters stand, he proposed to establish a solid link between one of his best acquaintances and myself, thus establishing a lasting alliance between our houses. Kugel is fully invested in making this work. I know if I refuse, he would be in for a disappointment. With those guys? They ain't got much, but I'll say, don't get involved. You might be disappointed, but don't get involved. And plus, I need prestige. So we could start rebuilding those buildings. But look again. They had training grounds and riding contests. We had them too, but they were destroyed. When they leave, we must rebuild. Because without those riding grounds, training grounds, we do not have the manpower growth, nor the morale of the armies to do so. And the max manpower, sadly. And uh, this is our max population. It's going very slow. And the max manpower, we cannot go anything higher than 349. Which means the losses that we will take will not be replenished until the population grows more. So, we'll be taking out a few of the enemies as a way of showing payback. But it's kind of dangerous that I'm a wounded man. You don't want to get severely injured out here. But I am a very healthy man. Thanks to this. A Meritat, so that's plus one. Plus two for Brawny. And I forgot I have this artifact for sure. A Homo Sapling. The sapling of the Divine Old Bush. A fragrant golden green bush said to grow on mountains. It can be consumed to aid healing, physical strength, alertness, and awareness. And the cravings of the flesh, so much prestige up, so is karma. Fertility plus 10 to make up for taking a meritat, immortality. And a little more health boost. And the war is lost, so now, now my Khan serves under the Khazars. Now we can go home. Even though they've devastated my home. Please release my wife. But it's the base reluctance is the issue here. 
But I fear he might do worse. He might take her in as a concubine. Now we must rebuild. Let's have training grounds back up. And appoint my uh, Chamberlain to oversee the construction just to reduce the build time. And finally the clan screen. One last thing I got to show you. This is the total population of the whole country as a whole. 10,000. And there are four number of clans. The Kangar, the Borutamak, the Surukube, and the Karabe. Ten. Yes, I want her back, please. I'll accept, because I want children. One thing is for certain, they'll never attack us again. But they will definitely support the wars of the Petronags. I think the reason why the war was over so quickly is not only they took his wife, but he might have taken one of his heirs and a few other things that he was imprisoned for. That's why it was over very quickly. Offense or defense? That is the question. A solid rock breaks the breast steel. My men will be that rock. It would be good for the morale, defense, and defense. I'll be unyielding. To make sure this mustn't happen again. Again. This is the clan sentiment. because, of, Which means, uh... We don't like uh, each other very much. And you can expect the clan's standings. I mean, of course, they don't like us because... We're the only Manichaeans, and the rest of them are Tengrists. And do not worry about the very low income that we have. The only other source of income is the silver mine. And a little bit of the Silk Road. Which doesn't give nomad tax, but it's trade round income. If we had a holding, then every little bit of it would help. But the Silk Road right now is kind of turbulent in some parts. So let's speed it up a bit. So that was the first year of 867. A chaotic start. Hey! What happened to the old man? Oh no, he moved this capital. This is his host. No, no, that's his host. His third son. Remember the Eagle Warriors. And he's an adventurer. He's... He is raiding his own liege? Is that what I'm saying? My god, his son is raiding his own father's land. Madness. Despite all this, my wife is uh, pregnant. As soon as she was, um, I would have to assume, as soon as she was released from the dungeons, we kind of love each other and uh, we're pregnant and we hope to have a son. Hail, fledgling. As members of the Eagle Warriors, we strive to better ourselves and each other. One way is the occasional sparring match for practice and honor. Seek out and duel the fledgling Arpad. You will find him in order. Arpad? You mean this man? That man? Who is a real character? But do not worry, this uh, Pensionary clan is actually a real clan. And when I looked at the start dates, the, this particular clan of Manichaeans actually persisted all the way, even when they settled to this part here. All the way into the 1100s. And we don't know if they were 
the uh, ones that influenced Bogomilism, that heretical faith that was started in Bulgaria and later spread into Bosnia and Herzegovina, which may or may not have been the Bosnian church. You know, it's also known as Christianity, which is an entirely separate thing. Anyways, I could scarcely believe it, but the pregnancy has made my wife Gundutz look more beautiful than she ever was. Whenever we are in the same room, I can hardly take my eyes off of her. Well, one, two, three, four. There is room for one more trait, so... I'll say better make a move quickly. Didn't become lustful. You've been possessed. I ought to be careful with you. And great, now he has seduction focus, but again, he's an old man. He's not going to be around for long. Training grounds is finished. And we will rebuild our writing contests here. Which ups the morale of armies and manpower growth. And because of our small size and a lack of manpower, raiding is discouraged, unlike what they're doing over there. Should have a child soon. And it's a daughter. Osgul. That'll be her name. Keep trying for a son. The old wound has finally healed, leaving a pretty protesque scar behind. Well, now that's good to be scarred because that actually increases your renown a bit. And thanks to me being brawny, it's plus two. All right. Now I have a combat skill of 57. I am going to get my tail kicked for this. Prince Arpad Arpad of Hetmanja has chosen, chosen to accept your challenge to personal combat. The duel will take place in the next few days. A fight for glory, eh? A simple duel for honor or not. Prince Arpad has an air of unquestioned confidence about him. When I charge, he snickers. At the end of it all, I'm lying on the ground after my opponent made sure to actually hurt me. Ah! By Zervan, that hurt man. Didn't even scratch him. Again, he is strong. He's a formidable fighter. He's one of the best. But can you imagine him being snickering with that mustache of his? Look. Now I got a swollen ankle. And back to being wounded again. But do not fret. As a fledgling, you are more resilient to battle injuries. And during a lifetime of war when leading troops, your experience gives you access to new events on the field of battle. Since the duel, I've been practicing a bit with Prince Alpan. The man did best me, and I was quick to ask for any pointers. I don't want to cancel that ambition for a bit. It's go make a friend, because... Permanent diplomacy gain. You're going to need that. The man did best me, and I was quick to ask many pointers. He seemed surprised at first, but today I'm proud to tell him that he's a good teacher. And friend, I add. I already have the proud trait, so... There's no shame in acknowledging a worthy opponent. Even though I was expecting to get my tail kicked, despite the fact that I'm brawny and all that, but I have a lot more to learn. A lot more.
due to negative events outside my control, the province of Sarajuk sees stability decline. Almost finished. So again, the training grounds is dedicated areas for training our population to help us train more than and conducting and defending against raids. The writing contest is a competition to bring forth the best writers. We just gained some money from the silver mine. There's also a wagon train, which expanded the capacity of our wagon trains could help increase the amount of civilians our clan could support, which lowers the nomad tax but ups on the manpower and population. The craftsman's quarter ups the nomad tax but lowers max population. Certain necessities such as yurts, kumis, ports, and kapazabos cannot be imported from settled peoples and need to be made by clansmen. It is more efficient to have certain people specialized in their manufacturers instead of having everyone to make their own versions. We also have horse breeder. Step horses are not as fast as the other horses but have much greater endurance and can withstand harsher climates. More refined breeding can help um, um, accelerate these advantages. We gotta get, we gotta save our prestige for this structure, which will be very, very good. The Urdu. A more permanent meeting place for our clan can help centralize and rely less on other clans. Because the more max population you have, the more it increases the maximum manpower. Which is still down at the bottom. And that source of income is the nomadic tax. The current population, the stewardship. So. Our population is not at the max, so for now let's just spend the. No, don't. I got something in mind. If I remember what. And you say prestige is important? Well, get a war horse. It is fitting for a strong Petronet girl to have a strong horse. I could go out and choose a personal war horse from the herd. If I choose to do so, I should also invest in suitably impressive equipment for it. I go out into the herd to choose a strong and powerful war horse. I look around with expert eyes and eventually spot a steed that stands out from the rest. It is strong and has a powerful bearing. As I mount my new steed, I feel certain that I made the right choice. All that remains now is to give it a suitable name. What shall it be? Since I have sympathy for Tengrists, let's name it Sky. Like Tengri, Lord of the Sky. Because that's what those people worship anyhow. It seems my interest in paganism has come to the attention of one of its practitioners within the realm. We have met and had the most fruitful discussions about theology and other matters. I made a friend. He didn't like me at first, but alright, I made my first friend. Now, I want a son. It would be of the utmost importance to have a son. Young Gudud's finished her education stewardship. Seems she's learned all the basic skills required. And she's developing a stubborn streak. Oh no, that's fine, because, you know, it helps with the stewardship. I'll just say, good for her. Every little bit helps. And since she likes me a little more, so maybe, yeah. Maybe we can have another child sooner or later. <sighs> I went from scarred, now I'm grievously scarred. Besides the monthly prestige difference, but look at this. Ups the attraction opinion and personal combat skill along with that. And increases the renown gain thanks to grievously scarred. I told you, this builds character. Oh, she's got the flu. Call for my court physician at once. D 
Did you treat her? No. Do we have a physician? Yes. Okay, another duel for honor against Etebar Zebulun, a Pechenag Tengris, Marshal of the Command Band and Military Tutor. Well, I have a combat skill of 58 and a man I am to face. Well, he's slightly better than me, but he is a military man. He is a formidable fighter. Plus, he is a tiny man. He's shorter than average. Okay. I see. I don't know. Content gives health bonuses. How do you like that? Alright, Abba. Let's see what you got, little man. You are the little man, and I am the medium-sized man who is a bit brawny. So remember, this is a sparring match, so take it easy, all right? <laughs> the onlookers are cheering for Abba. He is swinging his wooden staff with increasing enthusiasm. When it's over, the man looks at me with pity. Ah, what a staff. I just became severely injured instead of wounded. Good God. That guy can throw... Oh. My wife had gone to the market today with a large pouch of gold. Pouch of gold. After a day of training and bartering goods, he has returned to the castle. She has returned to the castle with a pouch slightly heavier than when it was started the day. Gold is always good. Only I wish it were more. I ought to be careful. But again, you have the uh, the Homa plant. You have immortality. You're a skilled tactician. You are brawny. You'll live. Calm down. <laughs> it's just <laughs> all I could say. This, hey, you really kicked my tail. You really beat me. That man can hit hard. For a little guy. Huh. In which he will, he will be saying like, Don't you ever call me little again. I'll stiff you next time. Don't mess with the Pechenegg. They're rowdy people. Especially to those here. And where is some the only mannequin? So again. I was recently maimed. Because the, the tiny guy kicked my ass. Oh. Once the wounds heal, the health will recover, but the damage dealt will never fully heal. I didn't lose a limb, alright? My training is paying off and I mastered a new level of combat skill. With enthusiasm, I look forward to what comes next. Remarkable. Now I have improved physical endurance. After training with dedication for so long, my mentor says I've reached my potential. I cannot progress further. Certainly I have improved somewhat. My potential fell short of the maximum. He could have trained me more, but um, I'm severely injured. So what good would that do? Night falls. I'm quickly asleep as I rest in my bed. In my dreams, I see a light. An impenetrable heavenly light. I know not what it is or even what it represents, but something about it brings me peace and happiness. Is Zervan communicating with me? Despite the fact that I am hurt <laughs> as all heck. I mean, maybe it is Servan. If Servan did speak to me, then it probably means something. Which, again, I'm the only mannequin left in this part of the world. Even though there are those further east, but we have no contact with them. So, this could be a sign of things to come. Even though it's just monthly karma game, but still, it's a sign. Please remember, save the prestige for this. Perhaps I should use my extensive military knowledge to impress the Khan and to like me more. Let us talk strategy, so I'll make use of my martial training in order to swear to my cause. Has 
His response to my letter was coldly and hastily written. When he's uninterested in military matters or he adopts the validity of my suggestions, it is clear he's not impressed by my letter. How could he not be impressed? Of course, also as a man of kin, you can found the Army of Light Holy Order, which you need 300 gold and 300 prestige, which is a lot. But speaking of gold, that favor you owe me. You lost an eye? But I tell you what, um, can repay that favor. Now I need, need now to decide what type of service I want at Vachuk, uh, Kuchuk Karabe, of Bukarabe to perform. I could ask him to further my piety, my prestige. If he's landed or not allied with me, I can ask for an alliance. Ask for gold, which success is guaranteed, which depends on the funds available for him. His number tells his opinion of me. Just give me some. After a long afternoon of some pleasantries and idle talk, even, af even after waiting longer for a late dinner, my request for financial help was well received. And results speak for themselves. Ah, the joys of waiting. Now I need at least 200 gold. Ah! Etabar Sage has gained a nickname. The Ahura Mazda. That sounds rather, uh... That's rather audacious of him. That could be blasphemous if those other mannequins to found out. Maybe ever since uh, I thought that Zervon communicated with me in a dream. Maybe I am the Ahura Mazda. I'm the only Manichaean left in this part of the world. Wants to take revenge of this woman. Good luck with that. But it would be better if you say, don't do it. Just don't do it. Ever since I got hit very hard, and maybe it's starting to mess with his mind. My intense study of warfare has led to increased understanding of tactics and strategy. I went from a skilled tactician to a brilliant strategist, which does up the combat skill a bit, but it ups the martial definitely, including the intrigue and the stewardship. This is a bit of an interesting episode so far for the first one. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, it's two different messages. Oh, <laughs> can I take more of your money? <laughs> but it can wait. And you want to take one of the concubines. A giant chaste woman. She's pretty good looking, actually. I wish she was my concubine, but I don't have a son yet. Because I will not have concubines until I have a legitimate son. But if this is to please you, then have at it. So now you have three concubines. Although, let me see. You do gain prestige. Actually, it does not say you gain prestige by having concubines. They do it for tribals, but not to nomads. After what seems like forever, and my maiming has completely healed. I live. Now the combat skill is 78. So do what you can do because you have improved physical endurance, but you're still a trained fighter. All I need to do is save up some money for a thing that I would like to have for myself. Just to increase combat skill a little more. <laughs> the tumultuous death of 
Korkate Kanga presents an excellent opportunity for us to declare our independence. Of course, Yavde Kanga might strike at us with vengeance for divine as well. No, I don't think that would be a good idea. We should stay loyal. Because we're the only... Again, the only mannequin, single province, Khazars, all that. You don't want to have that in your conscience. So, let's get to know each other. What the? Already they're Orthodox Christians. It says they're the confessors. Well, they're tribal, so they were next door with the Bulgarians or the Byzantine. It was Byzantine Empire that did this. I could recognize the missionary nickname there. Lord Tribal Obligations. Not Nomads. Keep that well in mind. They named me Kundur as one of the minor titles. Kundur here is a traditionally high-ranking official in the Khan's court. Bestowing it on someone is a sign of approval. Thank you. But I still have no heir. I'll tell you what, I'm not leading any army anymore. Just let me rest. <laughs> so I can actually do something. While my training has greatly improved my physical prowess and my skills in combat, it has not had a positive impact on my looks. My skin has grown rough and blemished by countless of amount of old bruises and small scars. As a proud man, I say, I cannot afford myself to look like this. Although I've had a full night's rest, the quality of the sleep must have not been good, because I'm feeling drowsy today. It's not good to be slothful, because diligent is a must-have. I have to stay awake. I'm stressed. I haven't had a good sleep. I'm going to need to rest. Seek some rest, yes. Got a point of designated regent. Chamberlain, you take care of things. Because I'm going to seek some rest. Ah, a bucolic rural environment. As I am stressed, how about moving to a calm place? Delegate the responsibility of running the country in one of my courtiers and rest a little till the stress subsides. Even though it says it'll be incapable, but in actuality, I'm just resting. Here's another Manichaean woman for you. I just need rest because I haven't had a good night's sleep. You need to sleep. Stop staying up late all night or doing who knows what. Remember, do your inner prestige. And Kundur Pechenegs gives me plenty of prestige, thanks. This here was not the most productive for the silver mine in Sarajevo. They will need some extra help to reach the annual quota. Oh, don't do that. I'll let them work at their own pace. Now the population's over 2,000. Even though we only gain a monthly population growth of plus 5. And that whole manpower thing, and eventually when you go over that limit of what we currently have, you would have coupled in reserve. Kind of similar to Europa Versalis 4. There goes my chance, There's not a lot of people at court, you know. 
And I'll finally rank up to Warrior. Honored fledgling saga, I hereby grant you permission to advance to the next rank within the Eagle Warriors. It is my privilege. Now, Monster Prestige up a bit more, plus one Marshal, plus one personal combat skill, and as a Reaver, when leading armies and successfully sieging holdings, you have a greater chance of capturing enemies and looting artifacts from the holder. You can also have Warrior Training. Enables right clicking on your character portrait in order to give you spe special commander trait. You could summon a lodge commander and call the steps if you were a Tengrist, which I am not. I will not rest until the stress subsides and then I'll be back in charge. And of course, I await for the next mission. Of course, we're losing a little bit of money. One part of that is due to maintenance. And the other is... Um, yeah, it's mainly the order upkeep. That's the main reason. And the nomad tax. Yeah, that too. But the main tax modifier. Is lack of stewardship. Here. If they had a falling out, then it's easy to assassinate them because that woman's got a high intrigue skill if, if you're going to be the kind of guy that likes to assassinate. And you don't get a lot of money either. My rest and retreat did wonders to my mind, and now I feel relaxed and at peace with the world and with myself. Time to return to my duties. I have returned. Get back to the war focus. And I still want a son. And she wants to improve her intrigue. Tell you what, I'll sway you and I will give you Kundor, that same rank that I belong to. Like her a little more and then she'll be more than likely to have children with you. She is a young woman, you know. <sighs> Again, we live in a marshland area with some good grazing land, but if we had the steps, it's excellent grazing land. We just need more land for ourselves, but that won't be possible. So we have to be self-reliant. Most of the time. But at least we'll be getting so much prestige. By next year, we will be spending it on this structure. Oh, you're going to put me back as Marshal? Yes, he is bored of duties. Alright then. Fair enough. Since you say you are bored of duties, then I'll be glad to help you out on certain matters. But bear in mind... I'm a scarred man, and the uh, council will uh, be introducing myself as this is Etebo Sagai, and I am of the Uhuru, and I am the Uhuru Mazda, and they'll be like, "Did you just compare yourself to the Lord of Wisdom?" And I said, "Why, yes, I am the Lord of Wisdom, my own wisdom in combat matters. Trust me when I tell you, I've been hit in the head a lot, but I never had a concussion." I only had cracked ribs, swollen ankle, and a very hard hit that really knocked me out for a good few years. And I haven't had a good sleep. And Servon communicated with me in my sleep. So that's why I've concluded that I should be bearing the epithet the Uhura Mazda, the Lord of Wisdom. Despite the fact that I'm a Manichaean and not a Zoroastrian. Now, anyways... They say that in Hindustan, there live mice who move around by jumping on their hind legs and are so small that they are the size of a tiny gold coin. Can you believe that? What silly stories we tell our children and the gullible these days. So 
Plus, plenty of prestige eh, now that you are the marshal again. A hostile agent operating and set a uh, joke. Is able to feel discontent of the local populace against my rule. The stability in the province declines. We need to catch the bastard. God dang it. Just when we were about to reach him. There is a chance that my spies discover who's behind his actions. Heavily modified by the realm intrigue, which unfortunately isn't much. Order restored in Samara. It is taking a bloody coup with being overthrown and imprisoned. But Caliph al Mutaz has restored order in the Ab Al Abbasi Abbasid Empire. The Sunni Caliphate is once again has the authority respected by the vassals. It remains to be seen whether the Caliph will exact more vengeance upon those his court kept them hostage, um, and whether he will be able to bring the lands he had lost back under his fold. Okay. That's my response to it. Let's talk strategy. The only stuff that I'm familiar with. My dissertation on military matters was very appreciated, it seems. Kanum Gunutz thanked me for sharing my knowledge of her. Remarked that she will treasure what she has learned from me. How could she not? Softener. Just make her like you more and she'll be willing to impregnate you. Oh, wait, no, no. I impregnate her, not the other way around. God dang it. I told you you've been in the head many times. No wonder why you've been calling yourself Floor of the Wisdom. Wisdom of Military Matters. Hold it right there. We've gotta build this thing. It'll take 159 days. It's quicker. We'll have a max population increase, just increase the capacity, and in turn gives you monthly prestige. But it lowers the clan sentiment of those fellow Pechenite clans out there. As I said, we need to be more self-reliant. If we can't go out to the steps, then we gotta make this swamp prosper. Do what you gotta do. As I still await for the next mission. Likely to be another duel for honor. And as your marshal, you are sending me over here to... It says I'm leading troops in Saku. Oh, the uh, Pechenag army are raiding. Are they? You can't raid your own uh, suzerain. You can't do that. A little bit more gold, but I'd like to have some more. So I could call for a smith to make a weapon for me. That's my next plan. In my studies of warfare, I've come to realize that clever tactics on the battlefield is the only part of the story. There are other disciplines of equal importance. War train requires 300. Because one of these days, I wish to have, uh, what is that commander trait? Go find the other members. Keep looking. Keep looking. Here it is. Marauder. This character possesses the great abilities of rider. Thundering across the steps. Light cavalry bonus up, so is the heavy, if any. Stab combat much better, so is planes and farmlands. No, I seek another area of expertise. I don't want any of these. As good as they are. I noticed a bunch of toads scattered alongside of the road. Why are they here? I hurry along the road, avoiding the toads scattered for who knows what. Toads are bad news, associated with the devil and all. Well, you do live in a swamp. Um, no. Frogs live in the marsh, not toads. Toads can live regardless of whatever environment. What evil business were they up to? I didn't pick up cough. <laughs> it's toads. Beware. 
That's my spy master. You can't kill him. Because I can't afford better ones. You can't do that. I'd have you arrested for it, but you ain't worth a damn. Even though you're my. Okay, so we have this structure built now. The max population capacity is now 35. Pillow talk. As we lie both awake in bed after a night of lovemaking, my gun duds came close to my ear and whispered across the calls a shiver up my spine. Out of thin air, she proposed to take the role of Baekja, my steward, and be part of the council. A deep wet kiss, full of desire, pointly underscores her appeal for a positive answer. You have 13 versus 15. That would be a bad idea because people would be looking at me very suspiciously, but she would be sexually aroused for the next three years and have a higher fertility. If you want to have a child, this is the rest of my council, right? They'll shun me for it in the next 10 years. And every single one of these characters would also hate me even more to have a female counselor and I would lose prestige. God dang it! It has its benefits and negatives. I don't want to have a... And I would have no chance of getting this... Uh, so I'll just say, perhaps we should discuss this now. So I'll attempt to make her change her mind. Be aware that if unsuccessful, there are many unpalatable consequences. Factors influence the success of this power. My traits and stats, so my diplomacy stat, though, still in the works. I am gregarious. Mm -hmm. I am, uh, what else? Uh, besides gregarious, uh, over the other traits. I, I ain't content. I ain't envious, nor cruel, nor ruffle. As spell, but as for my spouse, her intrigue skill isn't good, but uh, she is stubborn, which would uh, which would help her. And Roth, uh, ambitious. Okay, so perhaps we should discuss this now. I got to make her change her mind. If she says no, then I'll have to grin and bear it. The seduction of Gundus. Over many nights, patiently and with kindness, and care and empathy, and never falling to prey to basic carnal desires of themselves, I was able to impart on my Gundus the notion that a council position was indeed below her station. Seduced by my personality and covered by my lovemaking, she accepted her position at the court and lay the matter to rest. It does not increase fertility being a master seducer, but why on earth would I want to do that? Sure, she'll love me even more, but uh, does it look like I'm the kind of guy that would be a seducer of who I am? But I'll just say a virtuous display of seduction. Thank Zervan for that. Thanks to me being deceitful, I can trick people. Oh my goodness, this, she has the flu for the second time, but it's a mild one. I don't have a physician anymore? I don't. Hey, how long have you been here? You there, tend to my daughter immediately, even though I just gave you that title. Right this second. No, it's until two years, so if I don't get a son in the next two years, I'm switching to family focus. Because I want to have one legitimate son, and then I'll get the three concubines. Alright, here we go. This is what I've been saving my money for. It's 
too late for no rose now, but it's not too late to search for a smith. What type of smith do you wish to send word for? A weapon smith to forge me a deadly weapon. I'll send out that I am in need of a weapon smith. The Karabay feud. The Etabar uh, uh, Kutchuk, the just, and his people have hunted on our lands, stolen our sheep, and kidnapped our women. Even though they know very well our boundaries between our clans, they are truly despic they are truly despicable. And would betray us if they have given a chance. Beware of the Karabay. They are without honor. Well, this feud just began. Give me the money. And that is the last time I get the favor out of you, you bastards. He's been politically compromised. But be aware, he has a personal combat skill. 73, despite being one-eyed. But I'm slightly better than him. But I've seen some things. You know? The Karabe live on this end there. The forests there. But he has no money, so his troops, whenever we clash, will be fighting half-heartedly. And we can deal with them. And we can pillage them. They are restless. River. Fall. We could have been friends, but... Instead... There's weakness and a feud. And, and he has more prestige than I. This man thinks he could be the next con, huh? And you can only pay 25 gold to settle the feud. I would love to lead my horde to fight against his. So we're in a feud now. But we cannot declare any kind of war. Oh, really? Now the Suru Kube. It's them too. They're feuding with me. This is a conspiracy against me. And they're against us as well, but fortunately... No, not fortunately. You're looking at the money, not the levies. But they have far more population and they are far more dangerous. We need friends. We can have a dispute against them and we can actually take one of their counties. If you win. Which would be hard. But you can't go to war over there, but you can because we're closer. But again, they hold two lands, which is step, and it would be excellent for our population. As we are badly outnumbered and we could get routed by them. We need to get rid of them. Or bury a commit murder, that's another thing, but... Wouldn't want to do that. And even if you had the money, I would have uh, placed a bounty. But the opinion varies. Anyways, it's been a very nice experience bringing Dark Ages together over the years. With a considerable amount of time involved. Recently I decided to set up a PayPal donation page for the kind souls who want to buy me coffee for. If you feel like that, just click on the donate link at the top of the description section of the Dark Ages Steam page. Or press the donate button in the Dark Ages thread in the Paradox form. Thank you for the free coffee. I don't want to be intrusive at all, so that if you don't change characters and continue playing with the same dynasty, this message will happen twice per game. The other message, 75 game years from now, after you take your time playing Dark Ages some more, independently of your decision, it is a pleasure for me that you picked Dark Ages to play with. Thank you. That's the message from... The I had a sore throat earlier and I take the several concoctions to make it better. Suggest to me. I admit, the throat does feel better. The medicine tastes disgusting, though. Oh, well, it's only for a year. I was afraid of something like that. But are they blood brothers? No. They just both have it against me. 
They may have a common enemy. But they are against me in a big way because they see my weakness. And lack of prestige. Perhaps we ought to appeal for help. Hey, we're, we're both Scar Brothers. <laughs> you, you are Gundutz. Not to be confused with It's a unisex name, apparently. Really? I've seen this Paul. The Paul of the Great Wolf that gave birth to Taff. Ten half wolf Turks that later established the Ashina clan. Well, I'm not a Tengris, but I am of that culture group, so I would love to have that. And it seems you got a sizable lord yourself. I mean, I have a daughter, so. How's this? A trouble, you dummy. I mean, she has a flu right now, but she'll get better. We should consider forming an alliance between us. That's for starters. And now, form an alliance. Which will cost you 25 gold for this. And the sun. The day has arrived for the diplomatic meeting with Bay Gundutz of, of Salgor and his entourage. After the necess necessary pleasantries, we sit down and start the summit. My spies were unable to inform me on any particular weakness on the diplomatic group of Bay Gundutz of Salgor. Well, uh, not sure, but I have a very high martial skill. So, this could help with showcase my military prowess and might. So, this officer is slightly disadvantageous base chance of success if you pick it and considering your details. This one influences the result of the meeting. We have no alliances. I have a maximum of tier 4 martial education. My diplomacy stat is good. Along with that, my high martial stat. I'm gregarious. Yes, sir. I ain't craving. Now, considering, considering my uh, inner locator... The factors are his opinion of me, which is a little positive. He is not brave nor rough. The distance between us, we're neighbors. Basically. The difference in tier between both characters, as we are of the same tier, also impact that result. Long distance produces a negative effect. Short distance, positive. Also, if the character is a higher tier than he is, then there's a bonus. While the contrary grants the penalty. And finally, the bigger the number of alliances, the more conflicts of interest that he might have, thus creating another penalty to the success of action. I have a chance of getting a moderate success bonus thanks to the work of my spies, which it says you, they weren't unable to inform me. So pay attention to the event description, so there is none. So I must showcase my military prowess and might. Wish I could send you a uh, gift, but that will not do. Actually, I can, but it's only 15. Yeah, go ahead. Higher the opinion, the more likely he'll accept that alliance between us. Because I feel threatened um, by them. Because we want to have a dispute with them. So that way, I can be able to have this step for myself. Further increasing our population and a maximum manpower. So we can enlarge our ord in the future. You got that? Plus he himself wants Barsh. More grazing land for himself. So perhaps it is time that I ask Gundot to spend time with me. Perhaps this is probably the fastest way for me to gain her trust. So I ask her to come to my pavilion and spend some time with me, hoping it would sway her to my cause. She was happy to oblige me. Now that I have some time to spend with her. I am confident I can convince her how alike we are. And that she only stands to gain from our friendship. I don't know about this. 
Well, we could finally talk and probably spend a few days with her. It was finally being nice being with Gunduts for a while. But my wife Gunduts, not the Yugo's Turk next door. Even though she is my wife, my duties as that to bear off to prevent me from spending enough time with my own family. I'm sure you enjoyed being in my presence for so long. My Eran Spavad Kortugtan, uh, Korkutan, has told me about a remarkable weaponsmith residing in Ura. He suggested I invite the woman in my court to see her work for myself. If she manages to impress me, I could order my own custom made item. Fine idea, Eran Spavad. Invite the weaponsmith to the court. Once the weaponsmith's craftsmanship had been checked by her most knowledgeable attendants to ensure the quality was sufficient, I received her in the throne room. She introduced herself as Mistress Karasi uh, and, and gestured towards her numerous assistants who all carried examples of her work. Does my Etaba have anything special in mind? Knowing that we are nomads, a fine bow would serve me well. Bows may give a bonus of range, combat skill, prestige, and hunter opinion. A bow, I see. Excellent choice, my Etaba, says the mistress, and calls forward an assistant, cradling several bows in her arms. I have a couple of examples here. One must determine what one need and how much one is willing to pay, though the Alsevi Highness will. That's why I've been saving up that money for this. Craft me the best quality bow you can. We should hear it from the other Gunduts for a moment. Alright, successful summit. The diplomatic negotiations went very well and soon became an apparent good deal that could be made. I left the meeting in good spirits. Looking forward to a future collaboration with Bay Gunduts of Zagu. Thanks to your diplomacy stat. Um, we will have a, an alliance for eight years that I can negotiate to these conditions. As I was walking towards the mistress smithy, I could not hear but so the sound of progress, but instead the sound of voices talking. I found her and my friend Sati discussing different metals and compositions. All this talk was making my head spin. Definitely halting the progress on the work I have ordered. Hey, that's not why she is here. I'll take some monthly prestige for this. There's a 5% chance that she focuses on her task and produces superior piece of work, which further increases the quality of it. Thirteen. A slight to max manpower growth wouldn't hurt. 600 is quite a long way. But we'll be able to get a lot of prestige when we fight against this future conflict. That we would be getting some prestige out of this. When we take that land for ourselves, even though it's quite separated. But I fear him. That's why we need help. Hi. We've been raided. Fortunately, they were taken in river crossing. And fighting in the swamps doesn't help for him. A new clan has risen in Kanga. So that means he took the land and now there's a new clan, uh, obviously a Tengrist, who dislikes me. But we fended off those uh, raiders, thanks to you. So they live up here. Oh, 
Oh, nobody is qualified for the job. Hey, wait a minute. We have our very first data scouts. It's this man, who I named as court physician. And this is the kind of garb he wears. Right. You are going too far. He wants to be the Kagan. And whereas this one also has more ambitions for himself. And now there's a new clan. Which I figured that we may want to cooperate with him. Don't send him money yet. Maybe we can improve clan sentiment. Between us. That perhaps one day we should become allies. As I've already allied with another. Finally, the bow's been completed. The mistress has brought me the sturdy box which contains the item. My hands are shaking slightly as I open its heavy lid. This is excellent. Okay. Silver hilted composite bow. An excellent crafted composite bow made at the behest of Etabas Saga of Borutomak by Karzi. This increases the bonus of the mounted troops for combat. Monthly prestige up, martial up, and so is the personal combat skill. Now it's up to 90. And despite that, he could have a trick up in his sleeve. In fact, look. He's got Tengri's favor. He's got the Yadatashi. And he's got the hand of a great hero. This man's got everything. I would really like to raid his land, but he is a strong one. But he's over there. I wish to return to my ord. We'll end this episode very soon. Commander Brawl. Instead of joining the commanders, the Spabed Korgadan has been fighting them. It's truly a lack of discipline in my ranks. You idiots! You're hurting my prestige! Yeah, you'll get a favor. I suggest you give me some money. Because there's nothing else. You can't settle the feud. <laughs> because of opinion and clan sentiment. Sixty-five gold, alright. Thank you very much. When the training quarters is finished, next episode build camp fortifications because I'm starting to get rather paranoid about them. And we made allies with what the heck? Gondos is not involved, but he is imprisoned by the enemy out there. Oh, I'm sure when the hostilities end, he'll be free. I mean, his ord hasn't moved, so they're on standby. Are they now? I don't know where the rest of his army, uh, his ord are, but... One can only hope that things will be settled here. So we will end this episode on April 1st. Um, just in the lyrical main name of spring. So in that next episode we will continue to gain prestige. I'd be willing to spend some money on a completely different thing. That would help us get some prestige and piety out of this. And pray for a son. Because I'm willing to to go to war against a formidable enemy from from within, and that's them, and I want their land because they got a lot of population growth in. It's going to keep on growing, and their horde is only going to get stronger if we continue to wait it out. We must strike now. 
Etebert Tarak. In fact, he's already here. We could start fighting right here, right now. <laughs> In the swamps of it here. So. So we should consider. You know. You know, the situation we're in. But who knows what it's going to look like in the next episode for this Manichaean Odyssey. But until then, so long for now. <laughs>